Hello everyone, and welcome to our class video about congruent triangles in CPCTC. You'll find out what that means in a minute. Our learning goal is that you'll be able to apply the properties of congruent triangles and write a triangle congruent statement. Okay, so since we're talking about congruent triangles, like, well, what does it mean for triangles to be congruent anyway? Okay, well, you could probably tell me if I asked you that most of you would say that congruent means the same. But the question is, the same what? So if we're talking about congruent segments, they're the same length. If I'm talking about congruent angles, those have the same measure. What does it mean for triangles to be congruent? Well, that means that they're the same size and the same shape. So like these, there's two triangles with the same size and the same shape. What makes them the same size and shape? Well, their size comes from the fact that they have three pairs of congruent sides. So there's one, two, three. Because the three sets of sides are congruent, or the same length, that means the triangles are the same size. The triangle's shape comes from the fact that they have three pairs of congruent angles. One, two, and three. The angles of a shape give it its general appearance. So that's why I say they have the same shape. Okay, so congruent triangles have three pairs of congruent sides and three pairs of congruent angles. That's six different pairs of congruent things. That's six requirements to be congruent triangles. Now for this thing called CPCTC. Okay, that's an abbreviation that we use for just a fact or property about congruent triangles when we re refer to things being the same. So here's what it means. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, let's break that down. So, what does corresponding mean? Corresponding, in general, means matching. They go together. Okay, or for those of you who are Spanish-speaking, that would be correspondiente. Okay, remember when we talked about corresponding angles before? Those angles were corresponding because they were in matching locations. Okay? So, hence matching for corresponding. When I talk about corresponding parts of congruent triangles, that would be like these. Those two sides are corresponding because they match. They go together. They have the same length. And those corresponding parts are congruent. That's why I say that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Gosh, try to say that five times fast. Okay, so we can use that fact to write a triangle congruence statement. Okay, that's a statement that says the, the two triangles are congruent. But before we start filling in the blanks, I want to point out that the order of the letters matters. Okay, let me show you. We'll start off each blank with a triangle symbol. And the order of the letters is what corresponds to each one of the angles. So like, since C comes first, which angle on the other triangle corresponds with angle C? Well, that's Z. So Z has to come first when I write the triangle congruent statement. Which one corresponds with A? A matches with X, so X has to come second. And of course, then B would have to correspond with Y, so triangle CAB is congruent to triangle ZXY. Now, the order of the letters on the first triangle didn't really matter. I could have said triangle BAC. It's just the order of the second triangle has to match. So that would be YXZ, okay? When I change the letter, order of the letters of the first triangle, the second one has to go along with it, okay? For the third one, well, A corresponds with X and then so forth, so triangle ACB would be congruent to triangle XZY. This is useful because just from looking at the triangle congruent statement, I can tell what parts are the same. So, like this one. So segment RT would be congruent to, see how R matches with L and T with N? So segment RT would be congruent to LN. What about angle L? It's the same for angles. L would match with R. 
Now, actually, I just noticed before, just barely as I was making this, that, oh, there's two L's in that statement. So I could have actually said angle I, and really, if there's two angle L's, can I even call it angle L? Well, not really. I'd have to use three letters. So nonetheless, sorry for that mistake. Oops, my bad. Then for segment IN, well, that would go with LT because those letters are in the same locations. Now, is it actually okay for us to have two L's in the statement? Well, yes, it is. That means they just have to be the same location. So it might be something like this, where the vertex L is being shared by the two triangles. And triangle RLT can be congruent to triangle LIN. Okay, so let's look at a couple examples. In question number one, we're asked to find the value of x given the triangle congruence statement, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ. It's very important on these kinds of questions to draw a picture. So let's do that. Let's draw a picture of two congruent triangles. The first one will be ABC. Now when I put the letters on the other triangle, they have to go in the corresponding location. So X has to match with A, Y with B, and Z with C. Now I'll put the other measurements on there. So BC is 3X minus 4, Y is 4X minus 10, and AC is 14. In order to figure out how to set up the equation, I need to identify which parts of the triangles are corresponding, or which ones are congruent. Ah, so segment BC is congruent to segment YZ because the triangles are congruent. That means that 3x minus 4 is equal to 4x minus 10. Hopefully you guys are really used to solving these kinds of equations by now. I would subtract the smaller x from both sides, giving me negative 4 equals x minus 10. I would then move the numbers to the other side, so add 10 to both sides, giving me x equals 6. Ah, okay, that's what it asked for, that's what I got, x equals 6. If I wanted to, I could plug it in and check if I got it right. All right, let's look at one more. Here in number two, triangle cat is congruent to triangle dog. And it, give, it gives me a bunch of measurements, and it asks me to draw a picture and find the value of x. Well, I would draw a picture even if it didn't tell me to, but sure, I'll go ahead and draw a picture. There's two triangles right there. The first one will be triangle cat. And the second one will be triangle dog. Hush! Oh, sorry. Okay, so I'll put the measurements on there. So 14, 18, and 21. Notice that triangle is definitely not drawn to scale, but it doesn't matter for our purposes. All we need to do is figure out which sides match. Segment GO is quantity x plus 4 times quantity x minus 3. Ooh, we haven't dealt with that before. That's one of the reasons I put this example in here, is I want to show you guys how to solve this kind of a quadratic equation. Those two are congruent, so I would say that 18 is equal to x plus 4 times x minus 3. The 21 and the 14 don't really matter. That's just extra information, but we don't need it. Now. I said this was quadratic earlier, do you believe me? Well, yes it is. If we use the distributive property, then we could see that that's quadratic. Some other you know, teachers may have called this FOIL for first, outer, inner, and last. To apply the distributive property, I'll multiply x times x, then I'll also distribute the x to the minus 3, which would be minus 3x. I also have to distribute the 4, so 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times minus 3 is negative 12. Okay, I sometimes called this double distributing because I had to use the distributive property twice. Depending on what teacher you had, you might have also learned this by using a kind of box, like this. It gives you the same result. In each box, you just multiply whatever the two ones on either side are. So x squared, there's the minus 3x, there's the 4x, there's the minus 12. It gets you the same thing. Okay? 
This is now a quadratic equation. So in order to solve it, I'll first combine like terms. So that's x squared plus x minus 12. And since I'm running out of room, let's go to another page. So because it's a quadratic equation, my strategy means that I have to have 0 on one side in order to solve it. So first, I'll subtract 18 from both sides, giving me that 0 that I need. Then I need to find two numbers that multiply to give me negative 30 and add to give positive 1, because that's the coefficient of x. Those numbers would be negative 5 and 6. So I'll write the factored form, quantity x minus 5 times quantity x plus 6. This would mean that x minus 5 is 0, or x plus 6 is 0. And finally, I would come at my values of x, x equals 5, or x equals negative 6. Now, I have to check to make sure that those don't produce a negative response somewhere, or a negative side length, I mean. So, let's check it. I'll plug it into the uh, expression for GO. If I plug in the 5, 5 plus 4 is 9, and 5 minus 3 is 2, so 9 times 2 is 18. That's okay, it came out positive. Let's also check the negative 6. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2, and negative 6 minus 3 is negative 9. Those would multiply to give me 18 as well. The fact that those intermediary numbers were negative doesn't really matter. So both of these values are acceptable values for x. Okay, so... Make sure to keep your cats and dogs quiet. Don't keep me up at night. Gosh, I hate that. So anyway, I'll see you guys in class.